Understanding Bit Depth for Photographers. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. I am a commercial photographer. Been making a living with my camera for, well, I think almost 40 years now. Um, so we're going to talk about bit depth. It's not as probably as exciting as other topics uh, when it comes to photography, but I got to cover this, folks, because so many people come and ask me, and when I do a workshop, I get into the bit depth part and people go, I never knew that. And it can make a big difference if you can understand a little bit about bit depth. So one thing I'm not going to do is get into a lot of diagrams with math and all that. You can find that on the internet. And I, when I do a big presentation on bit depth, I have a PowerPoint that has a lot of those kind of diagrams in it. We're going to avoid that today because I want to get to something that I think that is more important than all the numbers. It's the concept or the mindset around understanding bit depth. So let's get started. So when it comes to bit depth, it's not where you end up, it's where you start that's most important. So most of us show our images on the web, on our devices, and it's JPEG, a JPEG which is very low compressed uh, quality. So why don't I start out in 8-bit uh, JPEG? Well, because 8-bit JPEG has very little information for you, and if you go to manipulate it or do anything, it's going to fall apart. So, you start out with the highest amount of bit depth or information in your image you can, and then you work down toward eventually maybe uh, viewing it uh, on a device or on the internet or whatever. But you don't start out in 8-bit. So we talk about the capture side of uh, photography. Now you can capture, uh, I think my cameras uh, all do a JPEG and a RAW at the same time, or you can set it to just JPEG only. Uh, again, not recommended, at least unless you're doing a news photography where it goes straight from your camera down to uh, uh, some kind of uh, upload system where it goes to a news service or whatever, and nobody touches it and it goes uh, on, the, on whatever device to, to uh, show the news. But when it comes to bringing your image into Photoshop, you want to go and set your camera to the highest setting, which is in the raw format. Now, um, when I started out, my first digital camera was 12-bit. Today, it is 14-bit. That's the standard camera that you have, unless you have a super high-end medium format camera that will capture 16-bit. It is, uh, the standard right now is 14-bit. So we really have Basically, three bit depths that we kind of talk about. Well, there's actually four, but three bits when it, bit depths when it comes to capture. 8-bit, 14-bit, or 16-bit. So as I said, the higher the bit depth, the more you're going to be able to manipulate your image. So when it comes to images like, say, an Ansel Adams type uh, black and white landscape, where you want to get that sky really deep black or you want to get the tones to really have this smooth gradient feel in the landscape, well, you need to get as high a bit depth as you can because when you start crunching the sliders to get those tones the way you want them and make them that dramatic look, it's going to fall apart if you don't have the right bit depth that you're working in. So I mentioned that we generally can capture in 8-bit, 14-bit, or 16-bit on a rare occasion. Photoshop gives you an option to go and work in 32-bit. So how in the world do I get 32-bit? Well, there's only one way. That is to capture at least three images, an under, a normal, and over, and we process it as an HDR. Now, you've probably heard that term. HDR has gotten a bad rap over the years because people think HDR is all about making this kind of bit mapping, toning, weird kind of look to your images. No, true HDR is about getting your uh, as much bit depth as you can, so increasing your bit depth. Now, you can go and say get three exposures and go and get a 16-bit um, uh, file and work with that, or we can go and do a 32-bit file. Now, when you work in 32-bit, unfortunately today, Photoshop changed this, it comes back and spits it out as a 16-bit. But all the crunching happens in 32-bit. So we'll show you a couple samples of that in a minute. 
So bit depth really is as simple as possible. It's the number of tones and colors and hues and values in your image and that represents the whole spectrum of what you want to show. So the more bit depth you have, the more tones or colors that you have to represent that image. Now, our eye is extremely limited to um, how much we can see, I think it's under 10 million colors, but in, in uh, uh, photography, we can get uh, a trillion colors. And our screens don't show that, but it's possible mathematically to show how we can get an absorbent amount of information in an image, but we are limited to what we can see. So to me, it's not about what I can see, again, if you say you show a 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit on a screen, that's not where the bit depth really comes into uh, play. It's when you crunch it. So if you have a, a fifth-wheeled uh, RV trailer that you want to go and across America and, and uh, RV across America, you don't pull it with a little Volkswagen. You have to have a certain truck. And when you go and buy a truck to pull a fifth wheel, there's all these different things you have to understand about torque and about the size of the engine and all these things because when you go and pull up a hill, you need as much power and torque as possible to get that fifth wheel up over the mountains. It's the same thing with an image. If you're gonna be some, doing some heavy lifting on an image, you want as much power as you can behind that a manipulation to get the tones where you want them. And I'm, again, I'm gonna show you some examples in a minute. So think of it as this. You, if you never manipulate an uh, image, very little, maybe just a little slider here and there of uh, tones and whatever, uh, light uh, contrast or maybe a uh, value, 14-bit's gonna be fine. But if you do things like I do, I need that extra bit depth to give me the tones where I want them. So when we talk about bit depth, you have to understand that bit depth falls from the top, the highlights, down to the shadows. So there's more bit depth in the highlights than there are in the shadows. Now, this is sort of opposite to what it was the mindset that we had when we shot film in the old days. And so I had to kind of rethink how I did pictures. Now today, what, if I'm gonna take a picture and I'm getting my you know, the exposure the way I want it, generally what I do is I expose for the shadows. I know some people are gonna go, no, Joel, you can't do that, right? Because I know that it's the shadows that lack the most dip, bit depth. So if I wanna pull detail out of the shadows it, in a digital file, it's extremely difficult, difficult to do that. The more bit depth you have, the more ability you can do that. We're gonna show you a graph here in a minute. I don't wanna to show too many numbers, but so it, it, it's the, um, when you talk about bit depth, it's the gradients and it's the shadows uh, that are the most important. Now highlights are too, we gotta to pull detail the highlights and it'll do that bit depth, the higher the bit depth, they'll have more detail there too. But it's really the shadows and in the gradients that you're gonna see the greatest increase in um, what your final image is going to look like. So here's a couple images that I have. Uh, here's a Lake Tahoe. I shot this with a uh, tilt shift lens, so I made it into panorama. Um, I shot three exposures, uh, two stops under, normal two stops over, and there was a big storm coming in. And what I did on this uh, is I actually bracketed my um, ISO, not my shutter speed, because I want the water uh, when it's moving to be all the same uh, uh, blurredness and same thing with the clouds too. And so that's not really important right now. I talk a lot about that in some other videos, but look at the tones that I have here. I have, uh, you want to appear black and you want to appear white in your image, but I have all these tones and the rocks and the, uh, the uh, clouds and all that. That's because I process this at 32 bits. And if I had done it, I'll show you some examples of uh, side by side in a minute of uh, 8 bit, 14 bit, uh, and um, 32 bit. But here we have a couple more images. Look at the tones that I'm getting here, folks. This is because I understand the value of bit depth. Here's an agave. And so look at the value, whoops, that went too fast. Uh, the value and change. And the sky black skies is another thing that are very, very, very difficult to 
uh, manipulate in digital. You could do it in the old days in photography with uh, a red filter or a orange filter would make your skies black. That's how Ansel Adam did it. But in digital, it's a little more difficult. And you start cranking the sliders to do that and you will get mush really quick, high, high grain. Here's an interior in Guanajuato, Mexico, uh, a 32 bit processed, uh, natural, I mean, the light that's in there, existing light in there, uh, the ambient light. And, um, but look at the detail. You can see the detail in the back of the, um, the chairs uh, in the foreground, uh, the highlights, the lights are not blown out. If I had shot this on exposure, no way would I have gotten that. Here's a, up in Oregon uh, in uh, Silver Falls State Park. Uh, getting and you're in the shade of the trees looking into the highlight of the where the waterfall is there's no way I could have gotten this picture without 32-bit processing uh, and again the colors are all there so here is a chart oh my gosh um, let's just take a look at this briefly because um, I don't want to bore you with numbers but if we look at 8-bit, 8-bit has 256 colors. You've heard that many that term many times. It's uh, per channel, of course, and it's times three when you do actually do the math. But looking side by side here, you can see that at 14-bit we have 16,000 uh, bits per color, uh, per channel, I mean. And then 16-bit is 65,000 roughly. And then 32 is 16 plus million uh, uh, values of color per channel. Once again, we will never see that. It's a mathematical uh, equation. But you can see that the, uh, the, on the math side, how much more information you are getting in uh, the 32-bit, say, versus, uh, say, 14-bit. Uh, it's a big jump. I, I want to emphasize this. This, you don't want to shoot 32-bit, and you can't shoot 32-bit on everything. You can't even do an HDR on everything. So it's, it's, a limited, um, it's a limited application. But when it comes to the processing your 14-bit um, image, you have to understand that when you go and manipulate that in Lightroom or in Bridge or when you get to Photoshop, you are going to be crunching certain areas of that image that if you don't have that, if you say start out in 8-bit, it's going to be a disaster. So this is why I want, to, I want you to have a mindset of what I'm talking about. Well, forget all the math and all that. Just more of a mindset that try to keep uh, an understanding of why it's important to stick with the highest amount of bit depth as possible. And I'm going to show you more images here in a minute. Some side by side. Now, this is a really, really interesting chart. This shows the bit depth that is in the shadows. Okay, now, um, I said that when you, and you've, I'm sure, tried this in a uh, photograph, when you go in to pull out um, shadow detail and you go, it's just noise. There's nothing there. Because an 8-bit only has four bits of information per channel. That is like pretty much nothing. 14-bit uh, has 256. A 16-bit has uh, a little over 1,000. But look at 32-bit. 67 million values of color per channel and when you do the math on that it's like a trillion or something this crazy amount of information so when i'm doing a landscape or i'm doing even a portrait i do 32 bit on portraits um if i have a leather jacket a deep leather jacket of a harley rider you know, kind of a tough looking person and i go and i shoot which i've done many times a 32 bit portrait that leather jacket looks like something you can touch. It's so beautiful, the transition of tones and everything. I don't do a, 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 a HDR in every portrait I do. And it's, pretty, again, an application that's rare. But when I get a chance to do it, it looks incredible. But especially on a landscape or when I shot the Harley bikes that I did for 100 days on the road a few years ago, I shot everything in HDR and I processed everything in 32-bit. And they look absolutely stunning. I've had um, Adobe ran a 10 by 8 foot uh, image of one of my Harleys for their uh, display in one of the uh, trade shows. The, the quality is absolutely stunning. Um, we, we've done enough now of uh, numbers. Um, let's talk about the, the proof is in the pudding. All right. So here we have um, a 14 bit image. So this is right out of camera, the way I would take it. And then I went and did uh, 32 bit HDR. 
and I shot uh, three, uh, two under, uh, normal two over. Sometimes I'll do one under, normal one over. Depends on the, the situation. And I want you to look at the difference between the two here, okay? Um, the, the, the left is not bad. And this is, again, this is uh, on video. So I'm on a screen and then I'm on video. And so the, 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 <laughs> the quality is going to be pretty poor uh, as we get it to you. But... Um, I want you to think about just at least if you can see the tones of the smoothness of the rock, the highlights on the top of that center rock, um, the detail uh, in the shadow behind that little center rock there and the little, the little areas in the, um, in the water there. Um, it's just there's such a smoother transition in, um, in the 32-bit one. Now this goes back to, and I just did a whole master class on the print side of things. I love outputting my images to print and it's when it's on a print folks that is where your jaw will hit the floor. You really do see it. Now you can only print a 16-bit but once again you start out in 32-bit, manipulate the image, drop it into 16-bit and then you go and uh, make a print out stunning. If you send your print uh, your, your, let's say your, your, your amazing TIFF file to a lab. I've talked to all the big ones. They will take that beautiful TIFF, that 16-bit, and convert it to an 8-bit sRGB. That's how they work. That's how the big labs work. Because they need speed and they zip it around and they don't want a big file. So the only way you're going to get the results you, that you should have in a print is hi hire a master printer or do it yourself. So I have a big old printer over here. Uh, it's 44 inches wide. It's one of the Canon uh, 4000 printers, per 4000 printers. And the, the results coming off there are absolutely stunning. And so that's one, another reason why I'm always trying to stick with the highest bit depth is because my output is not just on a screen. Uh, it is in a print. So here is a 16-bit. So I did an example a long time ago, 16-bit. Then I went back and I did it with 32-bit to see the difference. So it's not a perfect lineup because it was a year apart between the two. But look at the detail in the shadows that came out of this 32-bit. Let's try another one here. So this is an example um, where I just pulled off the side of the road out in, in I think it was near Death Valley. And um, so this is 8-bit. And what I did was I, I set my settings and then I ran that like that same setting on all these images. So it wasn't like I changed the, the settings uh, in Bridge uh, for the, uh, I wanted to get the sky dark. So I, 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 I think I did the blue slider to the left. I changed a little bit of the highlights. I went to, to the highlights to the left, the, the shadows opening all the way to the right, and then the blue slider to the left. That's all I did. And that's 8-bit. Here's 16-bit. Uh, and here's 32-bit. Now, what I want you to do is we're going to show up, blown up 100%. So here's 8-bit, 100%. And it looks like you photographed... Um, a kind of like parchment paper or something in the sky there. It's kind of falling apart. 60 bit surprisingly got really grainy because of that blue slider pushing it over to the uh, left to make the sky black produce all sorts of noise. So, I mean, it's extremely forcing that file to do something. But when you, I did it in, in um, uh, well, I'm supposed to say 32 uh, bit over here. That's my mistake. But this is the 32 bit image with the, Sky 100% blown up, very, very smooth. And here's the image processed um, the way I would see it as an artist. And so um, it's in it's in 16 bit, but I processed it in um, 32 bit. I started out in 32 bit. So what do we learn? Um, I, again, forget all the math, forget this concept that you have to understand uh, how many bits per channel and all that stuff. And, and there's some great videos on the internet that can, that can go into that if you're really interested. It's a mindset that you have to have that if you want to do high-end landscapes um, or you're doing car uh, uh, 
shoots for clients or whatever it is, architecture, um, if you're doing um, images like even still life or like for even food or product where you have to have the, the greatest amount of tones possible and the smoothest amount of gradations, then you have to increase the amount of bit depth they're using. And I've got videos on showing how to process uh, these images in 32-bit on, on YouTube here. So take a look for those. Um, I'm going to give you guys the files to this image right here, the one of um, the Joshua tree. So you can go and practice that and you can go and blow it up and look and zoom in. That'll give you an idea. You say, Joel, I don't really know. I've never shot an HDR. Well, this will allow you to do that. Uh, look for that file of, or that say that video of me showing you how to process in 32-bit. Um, there's a lot to be said here. Don't have all day, so I got to keep this short. I love talking about this, but think of at least going into um, uh, Photoshop. And I, let me show you this. Let me do this. I'm going to show you one thing before we go. Here is, um, let's just go Command R. It's going to bring an image up. I want to show you one little trick that literally, uh, when I teach a workshop, um, not, not half the class, but there's a few people in the class that usually go, oh my God, Joel, I never knew this. So when you load Photoshop for the first time or when you update Photoshop, it's always gonna go and default back in Lightroom and in Bridge to, let's go down here at the very bottom, I have it set to 16-bit, but it defaults to right here, 8-bit sRGB. So when I update my Photoshop, sometimes I'm like, you know, for a day or two, I don't even notice it. I'm like, oh, for crying out loud, um, I got to go back in here and go to 16-bit and I, either Pro Photo or Adobe RGB as my default so that when I process it, it keeps it as a... 16-bit file. It's really a 15-bit point one bit file, but they call it 16-bit. Um, you, you, your 14-bit camera capture file doesn't convert to 15 or 16-bit, but you work in a 16-bit environment. That's what they call it. So if you don't have that set, you're going to be taking those beautiful uh, files that you shoot in raw with that super expensive camera and you're throwing all that information out the window And I talk a lot about that and I talk about like buckets of marbles and I go through this big huge illustration It's kind of crazy, but just make sure you have that set to 16-bit and at least Adobe uh, the RGB uh, 1998 setting or pro photo and that'll give you the best results um, for your images so Happy shooting, get out there and create image. Don't forget you can download that, um, those files. And if you want, say, hey, Joe, I like this image, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that notification bell and we'll uh, keep on giving you some great content.